everybody. Welcome to Sonic Talk episode uh, 583, recording today, uh, live on Wednesday, the 10th of July uh, uh, 2019. I nearly said 1989. I have no idea why that, that came in. <laughs> it's because I've got 08 and then 19, I think. I don't know why. I, 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 maybe I'm going senile. I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, this is the uh, one of the summer editions of the Sonic Talk podcast. Sonic Talk podcast is uh, to do with all things music technology, uh, that kind of stuff. So everything to do with software, synthesizers, instruments, electronic music instruments, production, live stuff, all kinds of things. I'm just going to get my level because I noticed my mic was a bit quiet last week, so I'm just trying to get it up to the right level. That feels a bit better. Um, so, yes, we want to say uh, thank you very much to Isotope providing a prize this week. You'll be able to bar up uh, to buy. You'll be able to win a copy of the Neutron 3. It's Neutron 3 Advance, so it's kind of a swanky prize. I don't know what that's worth, but it's worth a fair old few quid. Um, all you have to do is uh, stay tuned to about halfway through the show, which runs to about an hour, and we'll tell you also we'll have a winner announced for next week as well. So we thoroughly recommend you stick around. Um, I should actually say, um, I think that's it. Yeah, what is, what is it? It's it, it's Wednesday. It's very hot in here again. It's been very hot and sticky. This this uh, we've got a big flat roof, and the flat roof just sort of heats up to this optimum temperature, and then just radiates. So it's like much cooler outside, but it gets very hot inside. Let's say hello though. We have a couple of guests this week. We managed to extract people from their summer activities. We have Mr. Gaz Williams, <laughs> uh, bass player and producer, who uh, couldn't get his mic working, so he's a bit roomy today. How are you, uh, Gaz? Are you well? Yes, I'm well, but reasons for that are to do with plunging into iPad OS, which is currently in beta. So that has kind of knocked my iPad Pro out of t traditional ser uh, service, I've just discovered. <laughs> ah, okay. Well, that's, uh, I guess that's something. But just... There is, well, I don't know if it's worth keeping this for a little topic, but. That is, it's big news. It is okay, big news. Okay, all right, we, yes, we, let's, yeah. let's keep that for a little topic because then we can, mm. uh, then we can, that'll give us, frankly, we need everything, all the help we can get because there's, there's, <laughs> there's not very much news around at this time of year and we have to sort of make it up mm. a bit. So anything that's impromptu mm. is perfectly fine. But Gaz, thank you very much for joining oh, yeah. us. Uh, in fact, we published the Atom uh, piece because you did a couple of pieces with oh. uh, uh, Personas. Uh, if you've seen the 4.5 update and also a piece about the Atom controller, because the Atom controller, it's like a kind of, it's a machina mm. to to the uh, mm. to Personas's software, and it, so it, really tight yeah. integration. Not only that, it costs it Very only good. costs about 80 quid. But if you buy it, you get a copy. Uh, co no, it costs about 120 quid, yeah. I think, or 100 quid. But it, if you buy it, you get a copy of Artist uh, Presonus Studio One Artist, which, which costs 90 quid anyway. So it's it's a, it's a no brainer, really. Very capable software as well. Very very good software. Highly impressed. Yeah. Good. So, but that's brilliant. That interface though, that little box, it is really good because it's not only does it give you like a kind of MPC type workflow inside of. Um, inside the studio one it also gives you a little bit of um complete control kind of ideas as well in studio one as well so it's interesting um yeah, i just well, got a complete i just got a complete control m32 today that's the little baby one just a little 32 key uh, uh native instrument thing anyway that's another that's topic another but story. That, that, yeah mm. i've been i've been using that as well but nothing i've been using it with seems to work like i did the massive x uh preview and that hadn't been integrated yet so i couldn't use it for that and i'm also doing i have been looking at the soft tube monument monument base which is really it's got a lot of girth and heft to it but again that's <laughs> not that's not ni uh that's not nks compatible so and it doesn't seem to accept program changes just a nightmare i mean why is it so hard to change patches on bloody software plugins it's ridiculous dominic hawken do you know why talking of that well yes it's <laughs> just it's the damn programmers isn't it it's just they just don't know what they're doing um well happy happy summer everyone there's only five and a half months left till christmas now so get uh, get your shopping Crikey. in um the uh what can i say about synth patches well i don't know everyone's moaning about midi now that i see they forget that it's been around since 1978 or something about latency and how rubbish it is and the fact that it's been around for what must be 30 years or something and still is a common standard and was invented by dave smith gets my vote so it's probably something to do with that yeah you could be right well i mean it's funny that isn't it i mean moaning about 10 or 12 milliseconds of delay in midi yet you're monitoring through your sound card which if you're lucky 
you'll get under 10 milliseconds, but mostly you're going to be up to, say, maybe 40 or 50. Gaz has vanished. I don't know where he's gone, but uh, his video's gone. No, not to worry. Not to worry. But as long as we we got to find out what his big news is, though. Let's maybe ask him now in case. That's what's cool. (laughs) Well, here he comes. He's back now. Sorry, you disappeared. Now you're back. Mm. Yeah, sorry. Just have to scramble a new system uh, because the iPad (laughs) Pro, which I was normally using to do the show, uh, refused to connect uh over this vmix thing but the thing is now i can i can happily report that well once ipad os comes out that the most annoying ridiculous restriction has officially been lifted files you can files audio files the lot and uh the fact that that's just been the most ludicrous i mean totally totally mind-bendingly stupid restriction on an ipad for so many years i mean you know situation like i you've got a bunch of video cameras and you've got a little zoom recorder you're out in the field you've got an ipad you've got really excellent editing software and you record your video cameras and you record your little zoom recorder you go back to the hotel you've just got your ipad you haven't got a computer with you and you go to put the files in you can get the video files in but you go to get your zoom recorder no possible way yeah so i mean sorry this is like an old story but this is so frustrating it's such been a such frustrating thing and now thankfully you can do it it's funny, isn't it? This? I mean, I'm going to play devil's advocate here because essentially the reason that all this copy protection was there was because when iTunes came out, it was part of the safeguarding yeah. of the digital rights of not the yeah. artists, but the record companies. Now that I t- neither, neither Apple at, and uh, all the streaming services have essentially devalued music to the point of non-existence, this is no longer an issue. So exactly. what they're trying to protect has no value anymore. So it doesn't matter. I bet you can't import mm. like DVDs or big or movie files, which probably have it. But yeah, essentially, mm. music ha- mu- music or audio files have officially got no value because now Apple iOS uh, yeah. supports uh, transfer of it. There we go. How's that? Um, yeah, I think. Also, carry on. Oh, sorry. Um, I, I was, was just going to say. Gonna do, really <laughs> you carry on, on, Dad. Let me have this. Let me, I'll just finish this point. Uh, I was running an SSD drive directly plugged into the, into the iPad Pro, you know, no, no, um, extra just power USB-C. or anything. Yeah, just straight in, and it worked beautifully. And I just thought, well, hallelujah! Now, now, finally, you can use an iPad Pro. I mean, I think that's partly because it's got the USB C. <laughs> Yeah. Apart from on the, the fact that the Pro. audio performance is way worse than previous generations of iPads, apart from that, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, well, I'm seeing better. I'm seeing better. I'm seeing better results. I have definitely but they're still crap. Results. Well, the thing is, it's beta, so I'm, that I've got to still. The answer you're looking for, I think, guys, is yes. Yes. <laughs> 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 But yeah, okay. I mean, if, if only it all worked, wouldn't that be great? Now, I, I mean, and I totally get your excitement because I think it is a really big deal that we can, I, I mean, which is mad that it is an even a bit, is even a big deal. It's ridiculous. Uh, sorry, Dominic, you were going to come in there. No, no, I was just going to completely agree. I mean, and the stuff you can do, even I've got an iPad Air, Air 2. Uh, Fab Filter have just put their filters out on it and all this kind of stuff. It, you can do amazing things. And yet I still end up going going back to the computer because of these stupid limitations. The other one being the lack of headphone socket, which actually oh, originally, oh. you know, I'm not even going to, well, I mean, originally I was one that said, oh, I probably won't need to bother about that. Well, maybe we'll be all right. We can always plug a dongle in or something. And now it's just it's just, just ridiculous if you can't get an audio out. Um, and I think I think it was you guys that was, that was getting so annoyed that they'd actually called it pro um, because yeah. it was just so far from being pro. It's a nice usable mm-hmm. instrument, but you know, it's a nice tactile thing to control other stuff, which is pro. Um, but yeah. And the thing with the thing with the music rights, I mean, as soon as they removed effectively the copy protection off the files themselves, which was a long time ago when you could download un- unprotected files. I mean, I mean, years ago, they should really have just opened up the whole thing anyway. I, I think behind the lines here, because this is a, an iPad only iOS update, isn't it? I think they're trying to converge the three systems, the iPhone and the iPad and the Mac desktop into a programming environment that you can almost squirt out any of three 
stand you know a, a one size fits all universal app for all three now obviously you can't take advantage all the way of some of the particular nuances on both but in the same way that you can write an app for uh, an iphone and an ipad which will work but i think this is all part of a process that's bringing yeah. xcode their development system into line into one universal development system and probably the watch and probably the tv and all the rest of it because it's become very disparate at the moment um and quite hard to write uh, you know you you have to write again from scratch if you're trying to take something that you've just done um on, mm. a, on an ipad to make it uh, on a mac for example so I'm sorry i was just i was just looking yeah. for because what where, um my new phone which is this uh Xiaomi um, Mi 9 thing, which is really, really good. I, I, I was banging on about this last week, but I don't think I mentioned it on air. So basically, I bought this on, on Amazon, uh, which is a brand new phone. It's 128 gigabytes. It's got a 48 megapixel rear camera and a, I don't know, 9 megapixel front camera, Samsung screen, Sony CCD and camera. 128 gigs of RAM cost me £279 with a dual sim mm -hmm. right but it's only got a usb-c port but and no headphones and i thought you know what i can live with that because I, otherwise i would have just bought on a second hand phone but I, it came with just a little usb-c dongle with a headphone output and it's, it's actually not that big a deal and i've got another one at home which i can charge through as well which because i leave it by my bed and i listen to audiobooks uh, while i go to sleep so you know it's not the end of the world but um, I don't know whether those things, the USB-C to audio, work on Apple devices. They probably don't. It doesn't say. So I just wanted to throw that in there before you jump to the gas. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, <clears throat> so people say, uh, someone said I'm a fanboy. I, I'm a fan of the idea of what the iPad has promised from the beginning. And we did Sonic Touch for how 30 odd episodes where we research, researched and reviewed everything up until that point. Okay, that's a few years out of date now. But ultimately, there was a kind of a conclusion that we sort of came to with uh, with iPad, and that was that the inherent limitations kind of ultimately will scupper it its kind of practical uses. So it's going to be interesting to see now going forward whether that actually changes. I I, I seriously think it can, it, it will. I, I'm sure it will. Um, but just. You know, I think that's why this is a, such a big deal, really, because, you know, the iPad, like, I take them to rehearsals, I take them to recording sessions, they are always with me, and they're super useful devices, albeit scuppered as was with this limitation. So, anyway, that's, what, that's it, that's it. It's big news. And I do think, as well, from what I've heard, that the iPhone with the... If you run the beta software, you've got more access on files as well on iPhone as well. But they're not they're not making a big deal about that. But I think mm, people have been getting file Crazy. access. Yeah. I mean, as we know, I mean, the, the one big thing, I mean, there's a really good editing software, which has just had an update. This is not really music tech. And we will move on in a second, uh, which is called Luma Fusion, which is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, if you saw any of our coverage mm -hmm. from Knobcon or Synthplex, all shot on i and edited and uploaded on iPads, but getting the footage in there is a nightmare if you're using external cameras, and we have to use and we have to use all sorts of Wi-Fi and stuff now. But be able to just plug a, a, an adapter, an SD card, and just bring in that footage at at USB mm. three speeds or, li or lightning speeds rather than the, at the speed of over a Wi-Fi network. Which you know, say you've shot a ten-minute piece on two cameras, that's going to take you two hours over wi-fi to get that footage in if it's 4k yeah high quality now it will be well not it won't be the blink of an eye but it'll be a workable amount so all really big stuff <clears throat> okay well thank you guys for bringing that up that is really good and and um thank you for taking the taking one for the team by putting it on one of your it's... current machines <laughs> <laughs> i know that's like first lesson of music <laughs> technology don't upgrade unless you yeah yeah <laughs> yeah well i got sick of it though to be honest <laughs> I was protesting and I, I stopped using that iPad. I'd stopped using it. I was annoyed with it. It was in the naughty corner and I was kind of cursing it out every time I walked past it. Also, this iPad Pro, it kind of, uh, me and uh, Sam Battles, look, mum, no computer, were legging it up this road uh, <laughs> and it went flying out of my bag. It went flying out of my bag <laughs> and it went -a -dug -a -dug -a -dug -a -dug -a -dug along this road. Um, oh, dear. And I was like, oh, well. And it's got all scratches down the sides. <laughs> but, you know, it's proper relict 
earned in battle right Proper battle stripes battle scars you know earned so yeah there was a, a, a funny moment with um one of my funny moments with gaz actually where <laughs> i don't know if it was this ipad i think it was the noodler or something you were you decided to live stream yourself demonstrating the noodler or this new bit of kit with your ipad and the audio was cracking, oh, yeah. and I, I was watching this video, and I thought, oh, hang on a minute, the audio is really cracking, and he doesn't realise. I'll text him. <laughs> so I texted Gaz, who didn't, I think, have my number in his phone anyway, and it took out the entire live stream. This message popped up. <laughs> <text received. laughs> and it just froze on the screen. <laughs> thing, and that was it. You, you were gone for the next five minutes trying to get it all back up running. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. <laughs> It was extreme, but it was properly helpful because it did allow me just to get a sort of. <laughs> well, yeah. I, 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 I let me let, let's just jump in because one of the first topics of this was going to be summer projects. Anyone, because uh, you know, as the summer comes, you know, but you either you either kind of ignore the stuff or you get on with some things that perhaps you didn't think you would because you know maybe some of the people you usually work with are away or whatever. So you get a bit more time on your hands. I see, Gaz. You know, we'll we'll take the the uh, the what you've just talked about as your input to that summer project for now and then we can come back to some other people as well i've got other things I yes, got other i'm sure things. you have so uh, <laughs> like, like i was saying you know some are some often you know people that we off, we also see lots of sales and software and sound uh, typically you get like lots of sound libraries and stuff coming out in the summer which is people sort of getting ready for some a burst of creativity i want to dominate what's your, have you got like a summer pro musical musical project that you you've got in mind that you're thinking i'm gonna when i've got a, a bit of downtime i've been um well yeah obviously i've been trying to finish this, this app which which is really annoying, but um, in, in that it's taking up so much time. But I've, I've been starting to listen to some techno recently. So I was into dub reggae for a lot. So I was doing a lot of that kind of dub stuff, which is, I think, where we started talking about me coming on Sonic State. Um, and that was really just, just I went I went doorless, effectively. I decided to change everything up away from Logic and just go and, and, and see what happened, try and change up my, uh, my, my routine, because everything was just becoming a little bit normal. Um, and I got a little bit more into modular, which had already been in, bought a few bits and pieces and did that. And now just listening to just regular stuff, really, on Beatport and YouTube, um, I've always liked kind of probably more um, techno-oriented stuff. Um, and I've always kind of like just sort of dismissed it really as fairly simple to make and fairly easy, you know, and it's just four, four kicks, drum and some noises and some builds and stuff. And there's been some that's been coming out recently, which is just amazing and really, really clever. And uh, I was wrong to completely dismiss it. So that, that whole thing in my spare time, when I've got uh, half an hour at the end of the night before I uh, hit the sack, I fire up Ableton, which is my other new change up in the last sort of four or five months where I've switched from Logic to do more stuff in Ableton. Um, and uh, and I have a crack at uh, finishing some techno tracks, which is really oh, right. Really, uh, okay, cool. Well, I'm uh, I'm my plan is to I I want I want to get a looper. I'm gonna uh, try and borrow uh, either yours, Dominic, or uh, Andy's got one. I want to try an RC five hundred five and just see what it's like. Yeah, me yeah. and a synth and maybe a, a Ventress and just sort of make a few things and and consider about doing some live livey kind of performance things based on that. Much simpler than my previous setup because it was such a pain in the ass to. To, to prep and set up and rehearse all these different aspects i'm wondering about that so that's that's going to be what i'm hoping to do um and i'm, but I'm uh, well the other music tech there isn't a music tech thing i'm thinking of starting a fishing uh, fishing channel hey <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. Yeah. oh no goodbye nick we we'll lose you to the fishing world oh. i don't think so i think it would take uh, it's taken how many years it's taken for sonic to get to 150k subscribers uh, so we'll see there's a battle joke know, in there I just, somewhere. I just, I just I can't get it. Connect, but... you know. I just, I think you and fish, and it's just going to go off, and, and we'll you lose think? you. We'll see. Mm. So, uh, what's what's what projects have you got lined up there, Gaz? Have you got anything ready to re that you're looking for? I know uh, you always have, but is there something specific summary? Summary. Um, so, like, fully booked at the moment, which is great. Uh, so, uh, what what summary stuff? Festivals. So a lot of rehearsals, a lot of rehearsals for festivals, which is very summer based. Um, just started work on a new album producing, which is really interesting uh, for this uh, Irish singer songwriter called Colm Regan. I produced one of his albums in the past, uh, but this time he's doing an album entirely consisting of um, folk songs and 
uh, all sung a cappella, so there's going to be only his voice is the only thing, but we're going to see just how much we can use um, technology with the caveat of it being only with his voice. So it's been quite nice, you know, to have a little listen to Medulla again by Bjork, who employs a similar voice only thing. But I think because of the nature of the songs, which are really old folk songs, um, there's some like shanties as well. <laughs> um, it's, uh, we're going to just see what we can do with arrangements and various things. Uh, so that's re really exciting. So that's a two week album project. Um, starting next week so that, that's kind of going to be that sounds like work i'm right? really curious <laughs> oh yeah yeah it's oh what do you mean you, do, you mean more like sort of just yeah just sort of project I, yeah it's that sort of thing i'm going to paint my shelves uh tartan opz god that looks even smaller than i remember <laughs> like a slide it's rule beard length yeah <laughs> that has had a very significant update which oh, we yeah, did the, the sampling from thing, yeah. Super Booth. Mm -hmm. Sampling is now in, in here with the additional bonus of being a, able to USB it into your phone or your iPad and you can sample directly from YouTube digitally da -da 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 -da, directly in with just that one cable. Now, that is dynamite also because it works in the other way as well. So when you want to do your mix down, you can do it entirely digitally through, you know, so your phone or your tablet so pretty significant you, obviously the op1 didn't have that did it you could bounce things down and make a tape and then you could grab that digitally but mm. you could do this in real time so uh something that has to be said though that when you're using it as an audio interface it doesn't really function as an audio interface it's really is more designed to to be the sampler the only way you can get playback to come out of the audio here coming from say your phone is when you're in the sampling mode there's oh, actually like, like a kind of monitor three, yeah. preview but okay. that means you can't well yeah okay then, but, then maybe maybe this is a good point to introduce uh, one of our videos then because uh this is sort of ties up with the same small creative thing and i just i think this is one of the best videos i've ever seen <laughs> hey critter the organelles here looks like there's some for a music news. technology product I mean. oh boy uh, Okay, let me just... Uh, nothing's happening. Hey, would you mind plugging in the power adapter? Thanks. Yeah! yeah. Update one. Battery power. Does that mean no more power adapter? Nope, it's still an option. But now the organelle is fully portable. Cool. Sounds like an early Zappa album, the music in the back. The mini gods! Move over just a little. No, you move over. I guess we're just too big. Hey guys, have you ever tried the eighth inch fitting? Hmm, let's try it. Oh, that's much better. Uh, I could watch the whole thing, uh, uh, but I'm not going to, uh, in the immortal <laughs> words. But yeah, this is the update to the organelle. And I, I've never, I've seen them. I know uh, uh, Chicky, uh, Charles Chicky Reeves, he's got one and he was totally blown away by it. It's a very similar concept to the idea of uh, one of the teenage engineering things in that it's got, essentially, it is a Raspberry Pi inside, more or less, with that runs uh, a custom OS with uh, pure data patches and a custom... Um, hardware thing and it's much more solid uh, people you use it for processing audio you can use it for synths you can use it for uh, effects and all that sampling all kinds of stuff and and this is the new update which adds uh, let me see i'm oh, sorry i didn't quite get to that uh, it's got a bigger uh, bigger processor more ram uh batteries uh speaker and yeah it will run pure data patches which you can write you can mm. you know on an environment that you can work on in your uh you know on, on the mac or on a on a pc or on a linux machine and then save the patches and load them in it's quite sort of you have to be quite committed to that sort of lifestyle but it it feels like it's a really nice thing it's, it's i think it's about 600 bucks so it's not cheap cheap but it seems reasonable um i'm i'm going to come to you dominic because you've got some standalone stuff there have you seen one of these? It's got little. It's got great little. Not hands on. Wood. Yeah, I've, I've I've seen them in in on screen, and I've heard them on screen, but not in real life. And I've been really, yeah, I love it. I'm really, really tempted. I, the thing that put me off actually was was the price point. I I just felt it was just a little bit too much for me to justify something with a Raspberry Pi in it. Um, I know what you mean. I'd love. 
I, I love one of those things. I think it's designed brilliantly. I love that kind of wooden keys and everything. And I love the idea of being able to tinker with it and plug it in. And the sounds I've heard coming out are, are brilliant. But to me, it's just when you can compare it to, say, uh, a lot of the sort of two, three hundred dollar things that are around. It was just a little excessive, and I, I can't, I couldn't justify that that cost. But I'm sure. It, I mean, from what I've what I've heard, it is amazing. It is lovely, and I'd love to own one. It reminds me in looks a little bit of the um, what's the, there's a Danish. I think it was a Danish synth company, and I can't remember what they were called. But there's a blue. They've got mm. a blue, somebody. Maybe the chat room will remember. I can't remember. But yeah, I know that. Um, that Charles Chicky Reeves was really enamoured with his. Mm. I don't know, Gaz. Have you ever played with one? I mean, it looks like right up your street. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've come ever so close to buying the uh, version one. Now this one is super tempting, isn't it? Um, the so a, a chap wrote a, a thing called I think is it called Orac or something? It's like a, like an OS for it, which allows you to do really lots more interesting things that i think came out uh, a little bit before this but opening up the functionality much much more um it's been a really interesting uh, little project and why i've been watching it develop over the different updates pr prior to this coming out and it was really heading in the right direction so it makes a lot of sense for chris and guitari just to to kind of now expand it again because if you check this out when it first came out or in the early days you might not be aware of a lot of the extra developments that it came like initially whatever patch was only always restricted to the four encoders so so whatever patch you were using you had to you know everything was designed with this very kind of uh right. kind of that fairly limited mm, but now you've got multi-pages oh, everything you can it's a, it's like a it's almost like a workstation now in terms of the idea of programming something can... like this on an interface. I mean, I don't, I'm if I can yeah, find but an image. bear in mind that you can plug a, a monitor and a keyboard and mouse into it, and, and it's just just treat it like a kind of like a key like a computer. So you, so that's the thinking really. Whack a screen into it, whack a mouse or ah uh, you know. yes, okay. And, I'm just uh, looking for an image, mm. some big images. Oh yes, you're right actually because <laughs> it's got. It's got an HDMI yeah. port on the back. Yeah, so that's sort that of is a pie basically. Thing. You can see the layout essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's got, which is uh, great if they've put in, um, you know, some some great A to Ds in there, and it sounds wonderful. It certainly sounded great, um, and it's obviously got a lot of development in there, and 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 there's a lot added, as Gaz has said. So it is very tempting, but it, it's uh, it's up at that. It's up. I don't know, just slightly too high price bracket for me. <laughs> I, but I think. I think this is the tip of the iceberg, you know, with all these like embeddable computer things that are coming out from the Axolotti, the Bella boards, you know, um, uh, the uh, Elk stuff that we looked at at Superbooth, um, essentially boxes with buttons, keys and sliders or pads so, yeah, same or whatever. <clears throat> there's going to be, there's going to be. There's going to be a load of them coming. Well, I uh, particularly think, now. You know. I mean, particularly now because the new Raspberry Pi Four came out, which I have. Uh, yeah. Here, which is right here. Which unfortunately. Amazing. Uh, it's this is this is basically you get them with up to four gigs of RAM. It's got way more processing power. It's got USB three, which is awesome, and gigabit Ethernet, proper gigabit Ethernet. Um, same sort of price. Problem is, is the mm. bloody board has changed, so you can't put it in original ca in the oh, existing no. cases. You got these two. That. You got these two. Uh, I don't know what they are. What are they? Oh, then yeah, because it'll run two monitors. So you have got two HDMI ports here. So that changes that. So I, unless I get the drill out and start uh, modifying my cases, I'm sort of a bit stuffed of putting it in the stuff I've already got. Mm. But hey, so I'm, yeah. yeah. What's the state of play with Pi kind of um, all in, you know, I guess you could be running a Bitwig on it, couldn't you? That'd be interesting. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Pi. you could. I mean, two monitors, could. you could, I mean, it runs 4K, it'll run, this, this thing will run a 4K monitor. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is absolutely crazy. You know, you could actually stick it to the bottom corner of an actual 4K monitor and it wouldn't obscure hardly any of the image and yet it would be running the image. That's really meta, but uh, yeah, I like the sound of that. <laughs> kind of fun. <laughs> um okay well anyway i wanted to put that in there that that wasn't actually the uh the the, the, the first story in in sequence <coughs> um we got a couple of things actually we've got ableton loop um 
has been announced. It's back in Berlin. Uh, weirdly, and I don't know how people, there seems to be a bit of a, people are getting a bit uppity about this or, or wondering what the logic is. They're running it on the same weekend that Superbooth is running next year, which is April the 24th to the 26th. Uh, Superbooth is the 23rd to the 25th. So uh, it's running at the same time of year. I mean, I wonder if that just means there'll be more people about and it's actually a really good idea or it's a really stupid idea. We're not entirely sure. I wouldn't have thought that Ableton mm. would have done it without maybe a chat with uh, the Schneider's people and, 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 you know, to see whether it worked. Because obviously it means they could bring, they could both have more people coming to perform and share maybe some of that, uh, you know, because if, if one flies one over, then they could be performing, so it cuts the cost a little bit for performers. That might be it, because that was one, my one criticism from Superbooth last year was there weren't quite enough, there wasn't quite enough variety in uh, uh, in the performances, I would say. You know, there was quite a lot of uh, men of a certain age looking at modular equipment and not really <laughs> making perhaps, you know, good music, as I would call it. I mean, I'm not saying it was bad, but it didn't, it wasn't a very broad musical palette, shall we say. Uh, yeah. So maybe that's it. I don't know. What do you think, guys? I mean, you were there this year, so. Um, well, I mean, it be, Super Booth being Super Booth, I guess you're all, you're always going to be looking at a similar kind of music, I guess, to what the people are interested in. But um, I don't know. I saw some pretty different things at Super Booth. But I think this is crazy to link to, to put it at the same time as Loop, I think, personally, just because... Um, the best thing about Superbooth is the sense of community and like if anything that sort of breaks that up just seems a bit of a shame really to yeah or so it might enhance it I, I should point out we've actually got think? Uh, this is a, someone called silent green i don't know if these all these mon these images will grow it looks pretty i mean it looks like a great venue it's the sort is of, that where loop seems, is taking place yes the, it's sort of uh it just looks Oh, there was another image which doesn't seem to be there anymore. There's a really big hall inside, but it's it's not there anymore. But yeah, that's yeah. apparently where it's taking place. Mm. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I mean, we'll see. I mean, I can't imagine the momentum that Superbooth has built up is going to affect because I think Loop is. Pro I don't know how well attended or how you know in relative terms whether Loop has more attendees than Superbooth. I would imagine not. I would think Superbooth has way more attendees. So there, so there must be seven and a half, seven and a half thousand attendees this year. Yeah, I think Loop is a bit smaller than that because it's a, it's a it's a, a higher ticket price. I think so. Maybe it's a bit different. I know, uh, Dominic. You're thinking maybe now you need to block out some time in your yeah, diary yeah, in April yeah, to get over yeah. to Berlin. Yeah, absolutely. I think this. Uh, <laughs> do it. Do it. Do it. Yeah. 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 This next one is. Yeah, I missed. <laughs> I missed it this year actually because I was chatting to so many people. Like, um, you know, you guys are Diff Kid and all that. Going, oh, I wish I was there. I really wish I was there. It looks really, really cool. And uh, so, yeah, from now on, I'm going to pretend to be a, a more proper YouTuber or a more pro proper presence and just get out there and have a look at this stuff. Just have to watch the wallet when I'm over there. I have one question actually, whilst we're talking about Superbooth, which is just completely unrelated, but um, Gaz, the motor synth, you saw that in real you know, with the, with the, the motor synth. How mm. noisy is it? As in when it's not plugged in making a musical noise, oh, how noisy are those mechanical th those things? Not, not massively. They're kind of like, they're from drone, they're, they're yeah. just from taken from drones, so they kind of they're quite whizzy. You saw, I, do you know what? It was so noisy. In yeah, Superbooth. maybe that's it why they turned it up so loud. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know was, how noisy drones yeah. are. I mean, drone, drones are. Yeah, forget it. I mean, I'm not, you're not going to take the sound that off a drone. A, that's a that's a good point Nick is making. Actually, though, that was the loudest stand in all of <laughs> Superbooth. They had it. It was banging loud, which felt right with these see these motors spinning and this absolutely enormous sound, but. Yeah, so sorry. I think noise probably. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I don't want to be negative. Really so I'm, I'm gobsmacked at how well it's done, mm. and you know how I'm brilliant. Good, good luck to them. But I just suddenly thought, hey, a minute, there's it, four yeah. or five of these motors in in that. That's a big old drone mm. to be vibrating on the table as I'm trying to cut it, through the cutoff filter. You know. I wonder good, if they run point. at the same sort of speeds that drone propellers run at, or whether they 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 dial back. Well, I would say they'd be about four hundred and forty times a second, may for four hundred. <laughs> That's a very good point. If it, uh, well, if no, you because, could get because just... there's a strobe on it, so it's actually yeah, so ah, it, yeah. So it would probably yes. be half the or an eighth of the speed, or maybe I, I am very, very good totally point. guessing here, but. but I think, if I... The vibration bit is mitigated though because as they spin so fast, they actually create a tiny little hover pad. So, <laughs> so actually, it hovers about an inch or like so a off, the, off, <laughs> off the desk. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> sorry, no, sorry doesn't. to just completely side <laughs> side swipe the, the conversation, but I keep meaning to ask you, and I thought the viewers might be interested as well. But sorry, so oh, yeah, um, mm. I just it realized does sound that. Oops. We've lost you, Nick. I think we've lost Nick at the moment. So uh, someone's oh. sticking. Oh, yeah, you're back. Sorry, we I'm lost back. you then, Sorry. Nick. I mean, uh, did you? I do beg your pardon. Uh, yeah, we got a competition uh, for Isotope. If you want to win Neutron 3 Advanced, we're looking for the hashtag Modern Mixing, the hashtag Neutron 3 to at Sonic State and at Isotope Inc. At which point now I will play uh, the Isotope. Uh, Presenting podcast. Neutron 3, the modern way to mix. Bring your workflow into the 21st century with eight modern mixing tools, all at your fingertips in one Mothership plugin. Starting a mix can take a while, but with the all-new Mix Assistant, Neutron can listen to your audio and quickly suggest a custom starting point for an individual track or set levels for your entire mix. Shape sounds like never before with the new Sculptor module. Match audio to a target sonic profile and instantly sculpt it to sound more like itself or like something else completely. Reach out and touch your audio with Neutron's immersive controls and visualizations. Neutron 3 comes equipped with Visual Mixer, a tool to help you effortlessly manipulate the landscape of your mix. Neutron 3, the modern way to mix. Yeah, and do check it out. You can always download the demo at uh, isotope.com. Head over there. You need to set up an account, but that's cool. We got a winner for the last week's sh uh, competition. It's a guy called uh, Jonathan Camarillo, uh, uh, at Johnny DeBaker, um, and he's posted a rather lovely gif of an old Akai reel-to-reel -reel with the VUs bumping and the hashtags that were required to uh, be chosen. So if you want to get in touch, Jonathan Camarillo, Johnny DeBaker uh, from Austin, Texas, or Ossetin, te Texas, as he says in his uh, in his bio. Uh, they did, please do. So, um, uh, yes, we should probably. Gosh, I, I didn't realise the time had gone. That's amazing how much time we've we've gone through. That's a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of waffling on my part, no doubt. <laughs> I might um, be we're late starting. Uh, uh, let me see. Um, I think. Oh, let's. Oh, gosh, I don't know whether to, where to go. I, I'm going to put this out to you guys. Which uh, where, where would you like to go topic wise? Have you got any? Who's done the most prep? <laughs> well, the war pigs video looks good. The war pigs video. Let's do the war pigs video. Right. Let's see where sh where that is. That's this one. Yes, this is Tara Bush. Uh, latest uh, release. She's doing a sort of single every month. Uh, goes out on vinyl. This is the video that she's done with Maps, really striking visually. And it's a live performance of a, a version of War Pigs, the classic Sabbath. I think it was off their first album, which I actually have. It's got a Sem two voice running the sequence. And an Arp Odyssey Mark 1. And also uh, MS20. You got to watch the whole thing, and then she does a bit. There's a there's a sort of guitar solo which is representing the. Uh, is it I am Tommy Iommi? Tommy, is that what his name is? I can't Tony, remember. Tony Iommi. Tony Iommi, uh, uh, where she sings into the MS20. It's just really nice, simple, three synths, dead simple. But uh, yeah, and also check out her Patreon. She's doing stuff. And I just thought it was nice to put in there because I know she's been on the show a few times and we like to support our friends where we can. And uh, I think uh, her Patreon's going well. You're a fr you're an old mate of hers, aren't you? So uh, that was very, mm. um, very, uh, uh, I, I, she's done, it's quite an interesting treatment, I thought. Uh, Tara is fantastic. The way she's embraced not just synthesizers but all kinds of aspects of technology is uh, is is amazing. Because whatever she does is always um, imbued with a with an innate musicality. She's I, I don't know if she's if she was classically trained or not, but she has got she can really sing. Um, you know, 
like an operatic style as well. So she's got a incredible range of talents as Tara. So and it's brilliant seeing this. This is a, this is a, a great indicator of that. But I have to say, it's a bit it's a bit funny because I play in the Charlotte Church Pop Dungeon, which is you know Charlotte Church was a famous child singer who sang all classical style and was associated well the voice of an angel with a very goodly kind of stuff. And we've been going out doing this filthy, filthy filthy kind of hybrid sort of music including a version and it's still in the set of war pigs ah. <laughs> so it's quite funny that uh that tara's chosen this one as well it's uh it's a very different version but it's um yeah just just a coincidence but when we play it uh it always goes down a, a storm it's still an incredibly powerful song amazing it's uh yeah yeah cool it's good and tara is always worth checking out 100 yes i would Amazing. i would totally agree and that they do uh, they release these singles once you if you're a patron of a certain level i don't think it's very much you get a you get a, an actual vinyl copy of the single as well that each one comes out in their t-shirts <coughs> as well so excuse me uh yeah it's kind of fun it's very different to, to the kind of stuff that perhaps you or i do i don't know what uh that that yeah, visceral but, kind of aspect and i like it it's just great i always end up um just adding way too much stuff to everything i ever do rather than stripping it back down to its basics and just kind of just you know let's let's make some tunes i'll put some kick drum in put some hi-hat in do this do that or let's add a couple of percussion loops or let's add this let's add that or i could do with another synth line and then 40 tracks later you've got this thing that's actually lots of quite good sounds and very few brilliant sounds there was a great mark hollis <laughs> quote <laughs> um r.i.p mark hollis from talk talk who said mm -hmm. um Oh, I forget the exact quote, but it was along the lines of, um, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna play a note, make absolutely sure that that note is needed, and if you're gonna uh, use a certain sound for it, make sure you use exactly the right sound, or just throw it all away. It was it was along those lines. It was much better put than that. And so the idea of having, I think it's three synths going on there, and maybe one of the synths was processing the vocals. And uh, it was. It said it was a live video. I don't know if it was live recorded yeah, no, I think as it was, well yeah. as in the audio. It was, it was all one go. I mean, it's an immense sound coming from. You know, obviously some great synths, but that kind of stuff just makes you realise that baseline that you've just spent a little while programming could probably fill the whole track if you did it right, let alone anything else. Um, takes me back to this thing I said yesterday. I sorry, I talked about last week. This um, Sherman Bank. That again, you make sure yeah. this sounds reminds me of you know the kind of gnarly, nasty, fat, thick, gorgeous sounds that seem to be coming out of um, of the synths on her vid. I also really like the 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 mic treatment. So there's two mics going on there. One uh, I see one I think was going through was yeah, it MS20 or something, yeah. Yeah. Um, and the other one just going somewhere through some distortion, but kind of very close mics. Just sounded great. I, my, the whole thing for me was just how large it sounded for how little instrumentation mm. there was in there. I think that's, that's what I'm trying to say. Just brilliant stuff. Absolutely brilliant. That's the sort of thing that synths can do. That's very true. <clears throat> but yeah. So yeah, check that out. I think I Speak Machine is what she goes under. So if you search that out, it will probably get you to the Patreon links and, you know, what's not. And you can get all of those things. Um, I think, oh yeah, there was, there was, uh, did I actually do this? I'm trying to remember now. Uh, FL Studio uh, 2.0. 20 point 20 i don't know of any DAWs that are at, at, at those sort of folk figures 20.5 is out and it's it's not the oldest do i think it started about 97 uh, and it comes with a synth called uh what is it actually called have i actually got a video of it somewhere what does that one do no that's not it uh synth called oh god i i am completely um i've completely lost it flex i think it's called i'm pretty sure flex yeah where's it gone flex free synth that comes with it as well and uh that people are raving about it and this I'll, I'll just play a bit of the video of this quickly um it's kind of a preset synth with uh mod movable macros and it does sound pretty good and uh yeah if you want to get hold of it but a lot a lot of people swear by fl studio in fact i was looking on the power user site this was this was gave me a bit of a, a um I was sort of scrolling through all the power users because I think, well, you know, because it's not a commonly, I mean, it's quite very commonly used, but it's not something that you necessarily see people using uh, 
for uh, you know main productions. But then I spotted uh, one of the power users is Mr. Mark Tinley right there. <laughs> He's one of them as well. I don't. I've never used it really. I know it's Mac. It is Mac and PC, isn't it? Has anybody else um, had any image line action? Because they're very highly thought of. No, um, I haven't. Uh, although I agree with you, I'm watching a load of YouTube vids, which is I just have YouTube constantly on in the background um, when I'm not working on music, when I'm coding and stuff. And there's a whole bunch of people, especially people who are primarily just kind of making beats and working with. Um, rappers or artists so they're just constantly making background stuff and then sending it to me to artists they all seem to be using it and it sounds great as well it sounds really really good um, yeah it's, uh, it's it, a lot of people use it for creating beats don't they and then bring that into their daw from choice you're absolutely right there it does sound like that could be there but it it, it it was that thing wasn't it when rebirth first came out um and just how amazing that whole thing was the next step really was FL Studio, or Fruity Loops as it was back then more. Um, it was uh, it was before the session view of Ableton Live came along. Uh, ah, so okay. so it's, you know, as, as a sort of non-linear way of working and, pattern, you know, building patterns and then being able to trigger patterns and manipulate patterns. It, 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 I think historically it, it kind of sits in that point in time, you know, um, and I think it's really interesting how even though it's developed so much, it's still at its core is still that way of working, you know, at its core, at its kind of, you know, uh, even though it's much more like a DAW these days. But, um, you know, uh, it, it was occurring to me as well that, gosh, yeah, how long, it, what year did it? Come out, did it's ninety-seven. I was because I was thinking it had been around on sort of Before, Windows oh. three point one or something, but no, ninety-seven. I think. What year was Rebirth then? Now you're asking. Mm. I'm gonna have to just look that up. I Rebirth. Th uh, I thought that was a little bit. I th yeah. Just um. But I mean, it was really brilliant to see Akai releasing the fire uh, earlier. Was it earlier this year? Which was the uh, nineteen ninety-six. Like, 96 yeah so yeah so it was that that sort of development um but yeah Akai releasing the standalone controller for it but only this year it's taken a long time that was the first time i'd seen any hardware that was that was specifically focused on um i guess it makes FLC. sense because they 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 are mm. Akai, yeah Akai fire let's have a look i can, uh, I can yeah. load that up Let's have a look at that. Yeah, that's right. And it, it, you, you're yeah. right. I'd, f I'd forgotten about that. But uh, I guess it's a beat making. I mean, it looks like a beat making thing. But look at that sort of step sequencing. So that's the. But that's the key. That's the. That's what I'm talking about. That is the essence of uh, of FL Studio. The step, you know, multiple rows step sequencer kind of thing. That looks like um, a great controller. Lots of buttons on there. It does really yeah, good but it's a bit a bit like the atom that we were talking about earlier that's really nice to just whip something out of the box and plug it in and not have to map anything and everything is ready ready to go so i think you know uh, fl studio users over all these years have been out in it's always had great midi programmability but everyone would have had to have just spent all that time mapping away so it's about time they add something i think <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, there seems to be a lot of uh, a lot of it to go around. I mean, it's because it depends on your platform of choice, I think, really, because if you probably started out early on Windows, then you might well be an FL Studio person because that was one of the few that was was around because it we didn't really have much dual platform stuff at the beginning, did we? Now, now there are, you know, we've got dual platform stuff for people like Cubase. And I guess Logic did, but I remember Logic going to the PC and then coming back, it wasn't a directly, it wasn't, and, and then they cut it off at five point something or other, but I don't remember it, it being on the PC for that, Logic for PC being on that for that long. I wonder what that was, actually, Logic. They bought Creator, didn't they? That's it. Yeah. They had Cubase and C-Lab, and C-Lab then Creator. I'm just looking at Logic Play. Logic I thought Creator. they just bought it and moved it straight to the Mac, actually. It could be wrong. And it was just that C-Lab... Or creator was sort of left behind on the PC briefly. This is back in the in the Atari days, though. To be fair, you no, know, and it was just most of the the Cubases and stuff were working on the Atari. Run Logic on Windows. God. I'm just trying to see. I <laughs> yeah, there definitely I, I was a Windows, wasn't there? I can't. Yeah, yeah. I can't find the um, the 
the, the versions there yeah because the search just turns up with loads of ways of running it in parallels or uh, or in dual PCs content. were really basic back then though really really basic and then uh, and all the creative designers or musicians or whatever were on the were the Mac fanboys back then so everyone yeah, with there wasn't much choice was there it wasn't was, 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 had to buy a Mac instead and shift onto that really so but I do remember a lot of people moaning when it was removed from the PC so it definitely ran for a while I just can't quite remember the history like you um but yeah, yeah I think another thing with FL Studio or Fruity Loops was was it shareware it was certainly was something that you could download for free way back before you could uh, yeah with I pretty much anything I, else. I don't know because I wasn't really a PC user back then I think it was I think it was I think it was shareware so I, you know it's quite interesting it's really come from that world and the fact it's lived to this day you know and it's it's, it's probably bigger than it's ever been it's just a really cool story I'm sort of a toast to image line I think well done yes <laughs> there that seems like a good well what a, what a good way to 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 talk. I'm getting so hot in here that it's kind of the, the air conditioning is just doing absolutely nothing. I don't know what it is. Um, right, People well, saying that Logic Five was running on Windows in the in the chat room. Cubic Hub was Logic, Logic, Logic 5, Five was the was last version. Yeah, that I think on, Five on was Windows. the last. But yeah. but I, what I'm saying is it didn't run from version one. It ran from something. Oh, three. I got you. Gotcha. Where did it start on Windows? Because it was a, I think yeah, it yeah. was originally it was a Mac only, and then it got ported. Yeah. And I imagine what happened was is they ported it to Windows, ran out of cash, then sold to <laughs> Just, Apple. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I suspect that's what happened. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. There was no commonality in, uh, in it would have been two completely different code forks and code platforms. It would have been absolutely yeah. no commonality. Whereas yeah. now you can actually, with stuff like Juice or whatever, you can, you can, you can compile for different platforms much more straightforward totally. i'm not saying it's easy i mean we still know i mean any sort of software release is is if a software release ever comes out on time or to a point where it's going, yes it'll be ready by october you just mm -hmm. know it's not it just doesn't it, it's because it, it's so bloody hard to make software especially complex software that just works in every case it is bulletproof yeah. and we've seen that before you know it's the same you know with massive x when we saw that come out last week I mean, I'm not saying it's not bulletproof, but there were things missing in the GUI and the and the feedback that they just didn't put in because I guess they yeah. just didn't have time to add that with for that release. So that we'd already it had already been put back. We we did talk about that at quite great length yeah, last week, yeah. but that's just yeah, an yeah. illustrative point. I think was all I was trying to make. Um, hmm. Right. Okay. Well, I think we should probably uh, we we could probably call it a call it a day. Um, I think we're pretty mm -hmm. much there. So, um, guys, thanks very much for joining us and. Uh, digging out the old ipad to uh to get to get online <laughs> well funny enough i mean this is this is my old ipad air now which has been when ios when ipad os comes out sadly this is not included so this is for the this is for the for the chop so to speak however i took it to a session yesterday recorded a big multi-channel session into this ipad air um uh three 20 minute p performances con concurrent across multiple channels maybe 12 13 channels um you know and it just was effortless it was amazing so it's kind of funny isn't it you know this as you get these technological and you know, consumer shifts all this stuff that happens but um the old stuff this, still works <laughs> To, to levels that are kind of way beyond what anyone can use still you know so hmm yeah. it said no it's just i just wanted to mention that because it was like if a lot of people have started to sort of think well i've got an old it's not worth selling something is it like an old ipad and get 50 quid for it it's a much more useful like sort of auxiliary tool i use yeah. all the different ones i've got for, well, me um, too. I mean, we yeah, because we've we use, uh, we've got an iPad One, original iPad, which runs the the Switch. You know, because it's just a MIDI controller. Mm -hmm. We just run it with uh, MIDI Designer Pro, uh, uh, which I can't remember which version. It won't go to the latest version because it's only work I don't know what iOS it's working on, but it, I don't connect it to the internet anymore. It just there's no point because it just nag me. But, I, I don't want to. But, um, but if it just like you know, you just put it to purpose, just running a single like a single app, like you do there, pretty much. Um, like like an iPad two will run Sampler, that's Sampler without an E, which is the all time greatest iPad app. It'll run Sampler perfectly, 
uh, right. my iPad Pro doesn't. <laughs> but I mentioned in that, yeah, it stopped working. The sampling function doesn't work because the sampler hasn't been updated, but it's updated beautifully for an iPad 2. So if you get an iPad 2, there's a place in Bristol that's selling iPad 2s that they got a job lot from NHS for 50 quid for iPad 2. And like, whack sampler into that. And it's, you know, it's an amazing, amazing, amazing instrument. Uh, I know we've had this conversation before, but it's just, it's, it's relevant to me because I've been doing a bunch of stuff with old iPads in the last few days. Uh, just like, it's the plus, it's the plus side of the- Yeah, well, as long as, the, long as the iTunes obsolescence. store continues to offer obsolete versions of software that goes with older versions of, of OS, yeah, that's fine. But if they get kicked off the store, they're just you're knackered, aren't you? I'm going to jailbreak all the old devices now and just um, and move them into that world. I think I think it's uh, yeah, it makes time. sense. Mm. Anyway, Gaz, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, it's been a pleasure as mm. ever. And also Mr. Dominic Hawken, um, who I thank you very much is uh, fully branded up with your snuggle sounds. Does that mean you're live yes. now? Are you live? Not quite, not quite. I'm just uh, doing the vid that goes with it. But there's a few mentions in the chat about it. So if you want pre-release copies or you want to try it out, um, I could really do with your feedback. So just tweet me, which side am I? This side. Just tweet me at Dom Hawken and say, give us a go and uh, let's have a try. So it's iOS only, iPad or iPhone. And uh, I'm just you know, mm. giving out some beta test things. I'd love you to try it out, actually, Gaz. Um, I'll send yeah, you yeah. quite happily. Do, so do. you just get a yeah, little please. a little beta update because we're at that stage where it's release release ready. Unless anyone finds test anything flight. so far, so good. Yeah, yeah, it comes through test flight. But tweet Excellent. me and I'll follow you and it'll all work. And yeah, sampler, what you just, well, actually what you were just mentioning, sampler's brilliant on the, on the iPad, but even as a controller, like a MIDI controller, I don't know if Lima runs all the way back to, to, to the very basics, but just running it, does, it as a MIDI controller so. for that kind of stuff, perfect use of an old iPad that's just, just not doing anything. Even if you've got two sliders going, you know, it's, it's just brilliant to control any of the old keyboards or software stuff. Fabulous. Totally fabulous. agree. Totally agree. Uh, well, I want to say thank you very much again to everybody. Uh, let's say also if you want to win a copy of Isotope Neutron 3 Advanced, remember we're looking for the hashtag Modern Mixing and the hashtag Neutron 3 to at Sonic State and at Isotope Inc. That's the hashtag Modern Mixing, one word, and the hashtag Neutron 3, the number three, uh, to at Sonic State and at Isotope Inc. via Twitter. Um, we will also want to say uh, thank you very much to all the folks in the chat rooms, uh, in uh, YouTube, and also on... Oh, I didn't get the IRC in there, because I haven't. you can see I haven't actually... That's the interface, the streaming interface. Never mind. Thank you to everybody in the IRC as well. Always a pleasure. Um, but that's it. We want to say thank you very much for watching. That was uh, Sonic Talk number 582. See you next time. Bye-bye now.